This Christmas, we have a Christmas gift in our family. It's probably the best Christmas gift that we had in my family. My oldest niece is having a baby. They were just married last uh, January, uh, and now they're expecting a, a baby boy. So uh, I'm going to be a grandfather. Uh, you know, uh, I'm celibate, but I'm the uncle, so I'll be a lolo. Huh? <laughs> so I'm very happy for that. And I've been praying for my niece and, and her husband, and uh, f I know that um, pregnancy is not easy, and I wish for them my best that the baby will grow old, will grow, will, will grow healthy. As I think of family today, um, I remember a program I saw a few weeks ago on PBS before Christmas. It's a program about how people in different parts of Europe celebrate Christmas. And you know, whether you are in Switzerland or Sweden or Germany, in other parts of the world, there are many traditions one of the traditions that really struck me was about this family on the 24th of December before midnight. They'll gather together and then light the Christmas tree. And they put the manger, the manger there and, and put the baby of Jesus in the manger. And then they will pray together as a family. They would light the Advent tree and really pray together. I was really amazed by that, but seeing that, that there's so, there was so much faith in that small family. And I believe that's the essence of what Christmas is, which we have lost nowadays, especially in families. We have lost the spiritual essence of what it is to celebrate Christmas. Christmas has become so materialized. I don't, I'm not against exchange of gifts. I'm not against material stuff that we receive or having wonderful celebrations. But I think what the pandemic has taught us as we only celebrated as a family in, with our immediate members, it taught us a lesson that in that family, whatever family we have, we should be able to foster prayer and faith. And that's the challenge that we have nowadays. But when you look at families, young families, I wonder if there is faith there. I look at uh, families who take their uh, children to school or to religious, religious education. I know there's some faith there. But I wonder if they really, really promote that deep sense of spirituality in the family. That the father and the mother teach their young child their prayer and they come together and be able to share faith with its other. I'm talking about intentional conversations of what we believe that a mother and a father will share to his young child. It's the birthday of Jesus. This is the most important thing, that we're here because of Jesus. And that our life as a family will become holy. For sure, every family go through different challenges and struggles. Look at the Holy Family. Look at Ma Mary, Joseph, and the Holy Child, Jesus. Even at the beginning of their life, they were met with so many difficulties. And one of them was the uh, fear of the parents of Jesus to having their child killed. And so they had to escape to Egypt. And before that, of course, we could see the poverty of how they could not find an inn to, be, to, 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 to give birth to their child. They were looking for an inn, and no one accepted them. At the beginning of their life together as a family, they encountered trials and difficulties. Yeah, it's one of us, it's family, all of us struggle in one way or another, especially now with this pandemic, how people are losing their loved ones. The greatest fear that one can have during this time is to lose a parent, 
a sibling, or even a best friend, someone that you care for. But the challenge for all of us is really to grow in deep prayer, to put prayer in our, in our homes, to be able to express how we believe and what we believe, to be able to encourage one another. And I believe that's the best thing that could happen to us as we face 2021 with this pandemic again. We pray that the silver linings of this pandemic will be that we have become close to each other, to each other as a family, that we have become deeper in our faith, that we were able to stay close to one another because we believe that God is with us, Jesus is with us. So I urge you, young families, if you're out there listening, I urge you, if you're a young parent, if you are a young parent, mother or father just raising a, a child or raising some, some children. I want you to really grow as a family. First, in your relationship as husband and wife. This year is the year of Joseph, as Pope Francis uh, told us. 2021 is the year of Joseph. And in this year, we will reflect on the life of Joseph, a quiet man a real faithful husband who was faithful to, do, to, his, to his wife despite the circumstances that he faced. Joseph was a real father, the foster father of Jesus. Look at their, his qualities. This man indeed was a man of prayer, a, a man who was faithful to his responsibilities, who despite learning that he was not the real father, that he took Jesus with him and his young family and cared for them. We don't hear much about Joseph. We don't hear so much of jo about Joseph in the scriptures, but we know that he was the foundation of his family. Fathers, I cannot just, you know, express so much you all. You have a big impact on the life of your children. Be that kind of father like Joseph, faithful, God-fearing, loving, and leading by example. That's your challenge, fathers, to raise your children. You are the head of the family. Your role is so important. And to the mothers, your example of faith is something that your children will ever, will always remember. How you taught them the prayers, how you taught them about our Catholic faith, and how you made them close to Jesus. Do not take these things for granted. Your work should be spiritual, not just economic not just providing for the needs of your family. Of course, that is important. But your role is to bring faith to this family. I'm just not saying, you no, know, telling your kids, oh, let's go to church, so oh, let's go in this. Let's observe the commandments. I'm talking about real a sharing of faith, that in your family, you're not going to be so... Uh, uh, unwilling to share what you have, to express what you believe, that you're not going to be shameful about your faith, that you're able to share intentionally your belief in Jesus, how God has helped you through your struggles, your own journey of faith. That is important. Children need to see the authenticity of our faith. So as uh, we celebrate Holy Family today, the first message I want to have to share with you is this, yeah. Foster prayer life and faith in the family. Second thing is that although we 
are not related. We are related in a way by, by virtue of our baptism. We are all brothers and sisters in Christ, in this community. And we have to take care for one another. By baptism, we have become brothers and sisters in Christ. And therefore, we have to foster the spiritual family here at Incarnation, the spiritual family in your different groups, prayer groups, the human family, that we're connected with one another, especially in this time. It's never more obvious today that we are connected to each other. This pandemic has made us realize more and more that we have to be in solidarity with one another, with families around the world. We cannot just be thinking locally. We gotta think globally. The challenge of this world is this, that we as human beings need to be connected to each other. There's no room for selfishness, for greed, for corruption. There's only room for love. If you want to have peace in this earth, then all human families need to consecrate their lives to God. We have to bring God in every aspect of our society. Let us pray that we can truly grow together as a human family. We pray for the families who are grieving the loss of their loved ones. We pray for families who are celebrating their anniversaries today, especially the Guzan family here present with us. To all families around the world, to all of you, may the, this day be a day to really reflect on how you are managing and taking care of your family.